From the creators of the Big Moon Energy Drink comes a bunch more content no one asked for. Patreon.com slash Sinclair Lore. It's recording now. It just sinks yeah. everyone based on sin. We're moving on up. God, you guys are going to the big leagues, the professional studios. Yep, you gotta, you gotta pay for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zencaster. <laughs> Okay, so Richie messages me yesterday, being like, Oh, what is this? And he sends me a screenshot of you sending him a file and being like, No, see you tomorrow. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, we're recording with Loki tomorrow. And he's like, Oh, I didn't know this. Then I told you to confirm with him first before we did the date. Well... <laughs> <laughs> No, oh. but I distinctly remember telling Richie and Richie yeah, Green. Yeah, I have yeah. that memory. <laughs> so I look through our chat, and it's not there. And then I'm like, oh, God, I guess I messed up. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Rich. Is it okay? He's like, yeah, it's fine. Okay. And then I was telling the story of my boyfriend yesterday, and my boyfriend's like, wait a minute, you did tell him. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, I heard you. You were voice chatting about the schedule, and you told him. This person records on Saturday, <laughs> and then Loki Sunday. So, Richie, Richie, I feel like you need to apologize <laughs> to me for making me feel bad for not telling you about a recording that I actually told you about. Okay, all right. Now that we got that okay. out of our system... Well, at least you did. It was, most, it was mostly yours. <laughs> Hi, Richie. Hi, Sin. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. We have a very special guest with us today. Am I special at this point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I still have that special spark. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always special when you hear Loki. Aw. Loki and I were talking, and I'm and he was telling me things about like Dark Souls, and I'm like, oh my god, you're the only person that can make Dark Souls three make sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, Loki, where can people find you? For Twitter, it's Loki underscore ds, and then for Discord, it's I don't know my own Discord name. It's okay. <laughs> I'll post them below. <laughs> Yeah, you do that. Make my life easier. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. And have you been up to anything interesting recently? I have been working on a Dark Souls 3 thing for Far On to thank all the people who have given me up to 600 followers on Twitter. Now it's almost 700, and oh my god, how many people like honestly want to care what I say. Holy fuck. Aw, congrats. Yeah. So I I got twenty I've gotten twenty pages in and then I decided I don't want to do this analysis of Farron anymore. This is getting even more more and more complicated the deeper I go. <laughs> uh, so I've decided I'm going to switch gears and do Carthus as sort of a commemoration. I don't know if it's going to be a big enough topic to be worth getting going from three hundred to six hundred people in like two days, but <laughs> and now seven hundred. But. I'm hopefully that'll come be out by the time we're done with this. And mm -hmm. after that, um, I'll probably then be posting a lot of scripts from older videos that I've done with Vati and the like for since that got voted on in a poll. And I've put that off long enough trying to get all this other stuff done for people before I, I tweet it again. But that's that's probably been like the best I can talk about as far as souls is concerned. Um, but for today, I also have been working on a few months back, and I'm returning to it now, um, Demon Souls, there was um, a few things there that I was able to get to. I've more or less finished with my Reddit post, because I think I've talked about all the big topics in Demon Souls, mm -hmm. as far as translation is concerned. So it's, it's sort of, people can just kind of read all that and then make of the whole lore of what they will. Excellent. So, Richie, what are we talking about today? We are talking about Demon Souls. Woo! Loki, um, can you generally tell us what today is going to be like? It's actually, I think, going to be relatively short, hopefully, but it's me, so who knows. <laughs> okay. So, go ahead, Loki. Um, 
<laughs> okay. So uh, the, here's the backstory about this. And I think I remember telling Richard this story a little while back. So this podcast is happening today is because I decided that I would be looking very deeply into one line of narration in Demon Souls, specifically the line about King Alant the Twelfth. The reason why that caught my attention was because as a writer, my first thought is, why the fuck is this here? <laughs> <laughs> it, that was my very that was my very first thought and to kind of prime people on, on why that went through my head is that when you when you write you obviously the biggest thing well i'm not sure if it's obvious but the thing you want to do is you don't want things to kind of just be wasted or pointless you just kind of meander and it's like it's just there and so i was kind of curious what the um significance of that line is and especially with my work in dark soul script where pretty much every line counts. Mm. Um, so the big question was, okay, well, what is going on with this line? It just, at, at the surface, it seems like just a useless bit of flavor. You know, maybe it was to prime the setting or something like that. But when I started looking into it, it ended up becoming a lot more important in a grander scheme and thing and i just remember going through the tra- going through thinking it over and then suddenly when when one thing one thing hit another and then it all fell into place and clicked and i'm like oh my god i actually have cracked the timeline to demon souls <laughs> yeah. so to sort of summarize what my findings will be for today it's that i believe i've been able to pinpoint the date of the first scourge and Thanks to that, be able to give us a general time frame on most events that occur or are mentioned in passing in Demon Souls on when and they happened, which is pretty big in so far as it gives you. And we'll, I guess, we'll talk about a few examples later on. But in terms of why that is um, helps so why that's so helpful when you're trying to formulate and understand the lore of a game, because a lot of my work in the Souls research finds that. It's a lot through trying to pinpoint events and trying to get time frames, even if they're only general in terms of centuries or millennia, in order to kind of figure out, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. And from there, you can work through what when other, where other events or other bits of pieces of the lore fit in. So I think I should just go into it now and just sort of talk about how we go from King Alant the Twelfth to the timeline of Demon Souls unlocked. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So first, I think we've talked about this on a podcast before, but for those that don't ha- or don't remember or don't know because they haven't heard from me before, um, the actual line doesn't say King Alant the Twelfth. It actually talks about the during the reign of the twelfth generation Alant, the Japanese way that you would say something like King Alant the Twelfth, like say King Louis the Fifteenth or whatever, would be written differently than how it is in Demon Souls. And I'm pretty sure the localizers just wanted to simplify it, so they just made it something that would be easier to understand and less awkward to translate. Um, but the reason why this difference in translation is important is because when we hear something like Alant the Twelfth, we think of Alant as a first name, a given right. name. But as the game, the rest of the game clearly shows, Alant is a surname. He, um, the King Alant the Twelfth that we're familiar with, is the father of an Ariona Alant, and there's also reference to. Um, Lord Rydell being a little Alant. So, right. yeah, there's so we're, by all indications, we're supposed to think of it as a surname, not a given name. And this becomes relevant because the idea that this is the reign of the 12th generation King Alant tells us that. There, um, that this is what we're talking about here is not that there have been 12 guys named Alant, uh, but that this is a dynasty, an Alant dynasty, sort of like the Tudors or what have you, in that there have been successively 12 kings with the Alant surname. And then when this fact is taken into consideration, you then have to start asking yourself, okay, well, how long has this dynasty lasted? And is that significant in any way? So then I began, so then my first thought was, okay, well, 12 generations is roughly 300 years. And that's where it clicked for me. Because you'll find that in Demon Souls' Japanese script, this is actually comes up quite a few times. 
And then it starts clicking to some other oddities. So we'll move on to now the next important line of dialogue. You may recall in the monumental, he sort of, or yeah, she, if I recall correctly, because I think the monumental's confirmed a woman in one point, but. Oh, shit. We've had a cat accident in the background. Uh, sorry, give me a sec. Anything bad happen or? Sorry, you can keep talking. <laughs> I assume Corvo knocked something over. Alrighty then, got it. So I'll just keep going. Yeah. Uh, start from the top. Uh, so now let's move on to the next line of dialogue. You may recall when the monumental um talks about the um the different people who receive the archstones. And one of them mentioned is, in the English, referred to as the king of a small yet diligent land. Well, the Japanese is a little different in that it mentions that it's an ambitious king of a small country. Um, I can understand why the translation went in that direction, but this is something, this is what we need to focus in on, is that, one, it tells us that the, the country is very small at the time that the Archstone is received, and this country is Boletaria, so later on, um, we know Boletaria becomes a superpower. It's called that even by name in some um, website descriptions, sort of known as the Northern Major Power, the Northern World Power superpower. Um, so that's something that we need to know is that we've gone from a small country to a big country. And we also know this king is referred to as an ambitious king. So this is someone who was king of a small country, but he's ambitious, meaning he wants that country to get bigger. He wants he has a larger ideal for what his country's potential could be. So then that thought crossed my mind. Is this the first Alant king? Is this the original King Alant who starts the Alant dynasty that we see leading up to our 12th King Alant in the beginning of Demon Souls? Okay, so if that's the case, can we find any collaborating evidence that suggests that this would be the 12th generation? Well, 12 generations is roughly 300 years, right? So... If you take about like 25 years per generation, more or less, that gives us to roughly 300 years. Um, okay, so then is there anything else that sh would suggest there's a 300-ish year timeline with that? Well, in fact, there is in the Japanese script, and you can see this moving later on. So, for example, um, the monumental is very vague when referring to what fans call the first scourge. In the English script, it's referred to as the distant past. In the Japanese, it's simply referred to as basically being very long ago. So it's rather vague on when exactly this happened. So we have to look elsewhere to try to figure out, okay, where, when did the first scourge happen? Or can we even pinpoint that? The next... Um, line to look at is actually with the Shadow Men, because there's and I'm assuming this was done because from what I've seen in game the various Archstone um, text is so large in the English version that they trimmed down a lot of the descriptions just to kind of fit everything in. Uh, possibly, I haven't seen them side by side. At least from what I've seen of it, but that's my guess. I don't know. Again, it's just my my hypothesis. But yeah, that, that would that would make sense because that's pretty common in translation stuff. Yeah, so it, I wouldn't be surprising for me because otherwise, there's no reason for so much meaning being lost in these arch stones. Um, so it's either willful ignorance or they just couldn't fit it all in. So they were like, "We'll just make the best we can." Um, either way, there's this line that gets sort of translated with too much vaguety in the English. So we talk about the the island that the Shadow Men are on, and then they talk about how um, they were ones who worshipped the storms, they mourn the dead, hear the storm beasts fly above the souls of the dead, inhabit, and the souls of the dead inhabit empty skeletons. Well, in the, the Japanese version, it's actually mesh, mentioned specifically that they worship storms and mourn the dead, in this land that should have perished several hundred years ago, souls of the dead captivated by demons are inhabiting empty skeletons. So, what you're finding is that 
um, besides the part about how specifically the demons are the cause of the skeletons doing so, which I think most people could infer, what's important here is that this land was supposed to have perished several hundred years ago. Well, that's interesting, because that matches up roughly with the 300 years ago that was mentioned that the Alant dynasty began. So, okay, that's a few hundred. Huh. And then you also learn later in another archstone, it's mentioned that the stingray like Storm King that flies in the sky was a conception of the Shadow Men who believed in it several hundred years ago. So again, we have this reference to the Shadow Men and their faith, their religion, was active just a few hundred years ago. So by necessity, that w would imply that the scourge didn't occur before that point, because, well, ma the soul arts, which is what the shadow men used and their entire faith is based on, from what we can see, this sort of occult magical rituals for their dead, um, it's entirely based around that concept of the power of the soul. So if that's gone for the most part, in the period between the first scourge and the second scourge, or a little shortly before the second scourge, then just naturally it would be reasonable to suggest that the 300-year time frame is when the first scourge actually occurred. So we're now dealing with this idea of, okay, we have an Alant dynasty starting 300 years ago, and we have the Shadow Men implicitly dying out about 300 years ago, them in their faith. Okay, right. well, what else do we n n know from that? Well, we know from what has been said by, um, I think his name is Bilge, I think it is? Um, Grey oh, Robber Bilge? Blige, Blige, okay, yeah. Grey Robber Blige. I always mess up the name. Um, that this... We know from him that the tr that these sort of the, the savages or barbarians or however you want to put them have long been dis destroyed, but this was always being too vague. So getting knowing that it's in fact several hundred years ago really starts making us have to think, okay, so that kind of limits it and suggests it. There's also now a good reason to think about, okay, what happened during the first scourge? There was great destruction, there was demons, civilizations are being done, and then what was left of the world had to be sort of mended together again. When you suddenly put that in its in its sort of put your put it in order, you realize that okay, why did the shadow men die out as a civilization? Well, the answer is because after the scourge, they couldn't use soul arts anymore. And if they couldn't use soul arts anymore, how are their how is their religion going to survive? Right. So this pagan faith is naturally going to collapse. And if the pagan faith collapses, then the civilization does it. Now, there's references to barbarians like. Um, Ulan, Ulan, in yeah. and, and other uh, and like other vague mentions of it in the lore. So clearly, there were sort of successors or their descendants did in fact survive there, but the pa the actual pagan culture and practices did not. And naturally, because the the monumentals banned the soul, uh, the practice of soul magic. Um. Then there's another another interesting thing that we have to think about is that in Latria, the Japanese text for the Archstone of Latria mentions that it's the country of the Ivory Tower that the Queen restored. So what happens is is that okay, if the Queen restored the Ivory Tower, then that means the tower had been up until that point been sort of in disrepair or had right. been ignored. Now, obviously, when we hear Ivory Tower, we think of scholarly pursuits. And when we think of scholarly pursuits, we think of um, sorcery, because that's just generally what Miyazaki seems to associate sorcery with science and scholarly yeah, yeah. and academics and all that. So we have this another another reference to this idea that, OK, so after the first scourge, there was these practices of, of magic or scholarly pursuit of magic, and they were sort of cordoned off and sort of made like sort of the forbidden knowledge for a long period of time. And it's only when um, Latria, um, most recent queen, had decided that she wanted to sort of restore the tower and bring and sort of bring out that knowledge that had been for long locked away and forgotten for so long. And we can also now we can now also move on and and realize that because the knowledge of the soul had been prohibited for so long, there's now 
this interesting little thing. One, what countries are going to flourish in an environment where where entire societies like Latria and the Shadowmen, who relied on the magic soul arts to thrive, is gone. Well, suddenly, countries that didn't rely on that so heavily, that were more, say, conventionally based on, say, swords and and um and physical armies rather than sorcerers, well, they suddenly have a huge advantage. So we have to consider now. There is a dynasty called Lant. Well, why did this dynasty start up? Well, usually a dynasty starts up is because the previous dynasty disappears either because of war or conflict or some disaster or tragedy or infighting. Like there's usually there's usually not like it is isn't like, oh, you know, we're just gonna, you know, stop ruling our this nation and just let you know, let you do it instead. Yeah. So going back to the dynasty of the Alans. This becomes the question of, okay, well, 300 years ago, there was a new Alan family. From what we can trace from the Shadow Men, 300 years ago, the first Scourge occurred. Well, we have to think about what the first Scourge does. You have demons and chaos and destruction, and all these countries are being sucked up in the fog or being destroyed. So there's a lot of chaos that could very feasibly lead to sort of either a political overthrow or the death of an entire government or the inter- just the general destruction of a royal government and thus requiring a new royal family to replace it so there's a lot of there's a lot that, of happening there that could explain why the Alan dynasty came about and in the aftermath of the first scourge where magic is now gone so the shadow men can't practice any of their faith or their cultural practices you have um latria is no longer able to perform any sorcery or do any scholarly study into the art because the tower had apparently been more or less cordoned off from that point onward thanks to the monumentals decree so what is what's what's an ambitious king to do when he has this small army in his small country and everyone else is kind of helpless surrounding him? Maybe he wants to push the borders. So we can start seeing how we go from ambitious king with a small country and then 300 years later King Alant ruling a massive superpower. We start, kind of see that this may have been sort of the impetus that what started all of this. Another interesting thing is that what we have to take in mind is that what makes sense about all this is that when you think about um, witches in Demon Souls and the faith of Demon Souls revolving around God and sort of all this hating of demons and stuff, it makes a lot of sense. We have to think about it. If 300 years ago, um, demons had been terrorizing the land and it was all thanks to this use and obsession with with soul magic that demons want to sort of like eat up from you and then all of that is now gone and locked and we've decided nope that's a bad that's a that's a taboo we don't want to touch it wouldn't it make sense then that all the old pagan faiths would start losing their relevance because they can't do any of the magic of which they base their practice their their faith on And now um, it's all been sort of forbidden or lost. And now there's this new religion that starts up, irregardless of whether it's true or not. It makes a lot of sense why the God faith gains so much popularity. Because now you have the this this religion that's suddenly coming out saying, you know what, we're anti-demon, we're anti-magic, we're anti-all these things that literally just caused world destruction. So maybe you want to worship us and our god. So that suddenly that makes a lot of sense when you think of it in that uh context. And we know that magic didn't disappear entire at least 100% because it seems witches still were a thing in demon in demon souls in the interim period. So we're talking about and keep in mind when we're talking about 300 years I think it was like about like almost 300 years, maybe a little over 300 years ago today that Blackbeard was killed. So that's both a very relatively short time and compared to like thousands of years of human history, but also very long ago. So 
it makes sense why even if it's like oh it's only 300 years well it's like 300 years is a long time for people to go from we're all anti souls magic you know the one true god is everything to 300 years later oh hey you know what there's this cool thing called magic let's go and like open up all this old forbidden knowledge that was kind of locked away in like the basement for some reason so we can, so we can still see that if anything it shows that when when Miyazaki's hammering home this message of how quickly humans forgot how short their memories were, he really means that it only took a few centuries. It only took a bunch of gener- about like a dozen generations, and everyone forgot about why all this stuff was taboo in the first place. Um, but when we see it with witches, we can understand that. Um, which is, it seems to be this case where occasionally humans will pop up, and they sort of have this natural ability to perform magic. They're, they seem to be more in touch with the soul, and sort of how emotions seem to naturally draw out the power of the soul compared to other humans. And they're branded as witches and as heretics, and so on and so forth. Um, and there's references, of course, to the idea that sort of these witches are sort of born that way. Their arts are cursed and they're fallen and and we don't want to have anything to do with that. Again, all of this only makes sense when you consider the fact that culturally, just a few centuries ago, there was these pagan religions that were all about the soul. They summoned demons <laughs> and caused near world destruction. And now uh, and now a new religion is to saying, hey, all of that is bad, let's get rid of, make sure we destroy all of it, and have nothing to do with it. So we can now see, okay, so the Church of God seems to then, therefore, have only been around for about 300 years. If it existed beforehand, that may be in much smaller numbers, we don't know, but it's now become the predominant faith, and all the other faiths were just forgotten old pagan faiths, whether it's a dragon god, or the shadow men, or so forth. Um, then this brings us to um, a few points that uh, Urbane makes, such as, um, again, this all makes sense again when we realize this context. Um, Urbane has a big issue with magicians, and he's sort of like, we gotta get rid of all the magicians once we're done with this Boletaria stuff, because, you know, they're the root of the problem. Um, and he's sort of right. Um, the reason, though, he gives is very interesting, because he says, because sorcerers soon become demon servants. Well, that's very interesting, because we haven't really seen that in Demon Souls proper. Like, generally, magicians and the like, we know that there's town magicians and that magicians do so, and we do know of, say, um, the old man who found the yellow cloth and ends up becoming a demon. But this idea that sorcerers soon become demon servants, it isn't like this is like the wide, the most widespread thing. And you could say, well, maybe this is just as biased. Well, maybe it's based on teachings in the church that the church is like, hey, remember all those those uh, those sorcerers who during the during like the great calamity the first time caused all of this shit to happen? Yeah, we remember, or at least the church seems to remember in some form. So this may be something that's again carried over in the teachings of the church, if not the history. And this is why we see a lot of them, them uh, Urbane sort of requiring that we've got to get rid of it. So we have. So keep in mind on what this puts into context. The Vindlins, which are completely, ba- which the entire family bases itself around the faith of God and holy weapons and all these things. That's a that's a family that's only been existing then for about maybe three hundred years, at least in its known current known form most of the persecution of witches was only been for about 300 years and you kind of see suddenly now we have a point of reference that so much so many of the events in demon souls have been occurring within a 300 year time frame um take say um there's the i think it's called brant not brant um brant maybe um with it's the it's sort of the holy hammer that has like dents of it from from giants. Oh, brand, brand, yeah, brand, yeah, yeah. Um, that um that weapon would suggest then that because we know the giants were still around in when they were receiving the the archstones three hundred years ago, and if the church has only been existing at least as a major faith in the past three hundred years, then the fact one of its holy one of the one of the weapons associated with it is known to seemingly have had gone come in conflict with 
with giants suggests there has been some sort of conflict between the giants and the church in, during this 300-year period. Hi, I'm back. You were gone. <laughs> yes, my, I, my cat was doing shit on the table, so I picked him up to like remove him, and he scratched my eye. Oh, what? You're not bleeding, are you? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Sin. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm just happy he didn't get, like, my literal eye, but he uh, scratched me pretty bad. There's some skin hanging. Ah. Uh. <laughs> like, a little bit. So I was, I don't know, like, I cleaned it, and uh, uh, I think I may have to go to the hospital. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. So... You can, I guess you can continue recording, but Loki, you'd have to record it on your end, and then send it. To That's me, okay. Or... We can we can stop now or do this another day, or Richard and I can do a different podcast or whatever. Like it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, you just get to that emergency room, okay? <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you. So I'll... Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll no stop problem. recording. <laughs> and uh, thanks for coming, Loki. Thank you, Richie. <laughs>